This is the Solid Signal podcast for the week of December 12th, 2022. We're new and improved. A little bit of studio equipment upgrade this week. I don't think you'll be able to really tell the difference, but uh, we are looking better and better here in the studio. I wanted to talk this week about the White Lotus. Why? Why not? Because I think everybody has been talking about it today. I'm recording this on Monday, by the way. So for me, the season finale was just uh, yesterday night, not even 24 hours ago. And it's, it's an interesting show, and I'm going to give you a bunch of opinions as usual. They are mine and mine alone. They don't represent the official positions of Signal Group LLC or any of its subsidiaries, in case any of that comes out, but I don't think it will. I just want to chat a little bit about this show and what we think about it. The first season of The White Lotus was uh, very well regarded, and, and although I didn't watch it at first, when it first aired, I, I picked it up a couple months later, and I'm glad I did. It was, the first season, a social satire, and nothing more than a social t satire. Darkly comic, uh, funny at times, and always with a an eye on the wealthy and how those folks uh, tend to get through life, often in very privileged ways. Now, it's not the place in this podcast to say whether or not it's good to be wealthy or good to be poor or what have you. I'm just kind of telling you a little bit of background on this show. Season two, of course, took a little bit of a different turn because rather than just being a purely dark comedy, there was a bit of a more procedural element to it. And yes, in both cases, we knew that at, at the very beginning that somebody died and we found out at the end that exactly who that was. But this time around, it, there was a little bit more of a whodunit aspect to it, a little bit more anticipation, a little bit more time for the audience to figure things out. Now, I'm going to venture into spoiler territory here because how could I not? So if you have not yet watched the season finale of The White Lotus Season 2, consider yourself warned and please uh, do both of us a favor and leave this podcast alone for a little while while you go and watch the season finale because I wouldn't want to be responsible for spoiling anything for you. All right, that having been said, we all know now that it was Tanya who died and that the internet rumors were correct. It's very hard to keep things away from the folks on the internet knowing exactly what they know and their ability to fast forward and, and pause things and work in a large group environment. And a lot of people had guessed it was going to be Tanya. And a lot of people, by the way, had guessed it was going to be Portia, her assistant, for a lot of reasons. So I, I want to say that it was almost kind of a, a a double red herring because I think you you were intended to think because of some very obvious things that it was going to be Portia and you really worried for Portia and it ended up not being Portia. And and over and over again, we, we had seen... Rich folks never get any consequences. And finally, we kind of did. We kind of saw Tanya get some consequences for the way she treated people, and yet really not, because her death was, in the end, accidental. She never really paid for the things that she did directly. She just had a bad accident at the end of things. And it wasn't funny, um, because while season one did have a lot of dark comedy to it, season two really drew you in with a sense of sympathy towards some of these characters that was totally absent in the first season, I have to say. Now, does that mean that creator Mike White is softening on his stance toward the very wealthy? No, I, I don't think so at all, because really what he was trying to do was create a bit of, of stratification, if you will. There were the very wealthy who had become wealthy through their own machinations, if you will, that through the, the bad stuff that they did. And then there were the people they brought along the way, their children, their wives, their personal assistants. And those folks, they weren't necessarily as bad. They, they didn't have the opportunity to be as bad because they didn't have to do the bad things that made the characters rich in the first place. I think for the most part, we still did see uh, that, you know, according to creator Mike White, Wealth and privilege is an extremely corrupting influence, and it's no good for anybody. But on the other hand, we were able to take sympathy on, on some of those characters. Not just the poor ones. Um, you know, I, I think that we could all take 
some sympathy on some people who really had no control over their lives or anything like that. But also, as much as I think that we were all rooting for Aubrey Plaza's character Harper for a long time, it was really Megan Fahey's character Daphne who ended up being the real heart of the show. And I have to applaud Megan Fahey for the, the quality of the acting in the last episode. There was a, that moment when she was told that her husband may have cheated on her and it was never really firmly established that he did. And really, it was just about 10 seconds of close-up on her face as you could watch her processing all of those emotions one by one by one and eventually settling into the idea that this is where she is, who she is, and where she's at. Um, I, I think that that's a tough way to go through life, but it is the way that she chose to do it. And I think there's a certain amount of dignity in making the best of your situation. Although... There does seem to be some question as to whether or not uh, Daphne took Ethan over to the small island to have an affair with him. And I, I don't know. I personally think that that, she, that was her intention, but then I would like to think that they never really did, that they just kind of commiserated and maybe gave each other a communal hug or something like that. Because I want to believe that... that at least some of these people can be good at some time. I, I don't know. But neither here nor there. The show is over for another year or so. It's hard to know where season three is going to go. But we do know there is going to be a season three. Um, the smart money is on it taking place in the Far East because of a comment that was made by uh, creator Mike White, something about it dealing with the consequences of Far Eastern philosophy. But I don't think it really matters. I will say that I was absolutely spellbound by the locations this season. Um, I had hoped to get to the southern part of Italy back in 2020. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember why I didn't go out that year. Uh, right? Anyway, it turns out I really didn't do it. Um, I had been to Maui, which was the site of season one. And so maybe its beauty was not exactly as impactful to me as, as Sicily's beauty was. But I will say that, that I thought that the, the settings were just absolutely gorgeous. And that made you a little bit jealous of the wealthier people in the show, especially the first two episodes when you were just getting to know everybody, because they were in this incredibly beautiful place where the water was clean and clear and blue and Everything just had character to it, that the kind of character you can only get with 500 years of history. I'd still like to get out to the south of Italy sometime, but, well, hopefully next year, because this year is almost over. That's right. Next week will probably be our annual wrap-up podcast, or possibly the week after, depending on how the timing goes. And I'll probably get to something a little bit more on topic. I've been waxing poetic about the White Lotus, and this is not something I normally do in this podcast, but I was personally affected by the show. I thought that it was well done. I thought that there was a lot to like about it, and there were a few things to dislike about it. I think that there are going to be some people who could really make hay about the way that women were treated, or homosexuals were depicted, or even the way that that different people from different classes were treated. I Look, you can go that way, and I'm not going to do that because this isn't that kind of podcast. But really, in the end, I found it to be entertaining. I found it to be well acted and well done from everybody involved. Um, the people you were supposed to hate, you genuinely hated. The people you were supposed to have sympathy for, you genuinely had sympathy for. Just overall, uh, well done. And I hope, all I can do is hope, that the heavy axe of discovery and its leader, David Zaslav, stays away from the White Lotus. Um, it seems like every day we learn that Discovery Plus has canceled yet another HBO or DC project that we were looking forward to. Uh, let's hope that this time around they're able to restrain themselves and produce a season three of White Lotus that will keep people coming back. Anyway, that's about it for the podcast this week. As I always say, like and subscribe makes me look good to my bosses. Come back next week 
and we'll have a whole different set of perspectives for you on the Solid Signal podcast. In the meantime, leave a comment wherever you get this one and tell a friend because that's how podcasts spread is the people like to hear about them and they tell the people they know and that's the way it goes. I'll be back next week and until then, have a great one.